As the name already suggests, the distribute 3D cylinder eye expression can be used to arrange a bunch of layers in 3D space as if they would be placed on top of a cylinder surface. Yeah. So in this case I have already prepared here a bunch of layers, in total 24 layers, and I already renamed the first one first because the eye expression needs to know the name or index of the first layer. So we put first here. And that's basically everything it needs to get started. So from uh, if, if, it, if the eye expression knows this, um, we can apply it. And then it will arrange all of them. So here's the center of the uh, cylinder and here's the radius. Let's just apply it. Apply. You can see that it now looks a bit strange and this is because the layers themselves are actually much larger than the um, than the uh, uh, element itself. So if we scale them down to say 5% or so, they look already much, much better. Yeah? And what we also want to do is we want to move them so it's best to parent them to a null. So to move the cylinder better, create a null, new null object and we call this whoops we call this null object uh, center for example and now I select all of these and just parent them here and you yeah now you can see that the cylinder immediately jumps to this uh, position yeah so you can see that the layers are nicely arranged here in um, 3D space, but they are not yet oriented correctly. Yeah, so they should look to the middle of the um, uh, to the to the middle of this sphere. And for this, we need an orientation eye expression, namely in layer placement, layer orientation. You could get the idea that you need a look at point 3D. And I want to show you first why this is not working. Why you need to look at line instead. But let's first try the look at point. And so the idea would be, okay, they should look at the zero point, which is here where this null is located. Yeah? And if we do this and apply it to all these layers, so they all should look at this point zero, 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 which is the, par the point where their parent is located. Apply. And you can see for this first round of layers it looks quite nice. They are nicely arranged, but those now look upwards. Yeah? And these here look upwards even more. So this is not what we want. We want them to all to not look at this point here, but actually at this entire line. Yeah. So this means these layers should look at this point, but these layers here should look at this point rather, and these layers should look at this point. Therefore we need to specify here a line at which they should look. So we go to library, layer placement, uh, layer orientation and now not look at point 3D but look at line 3D. And this is basically the same except that we can give it two points and the nice thing for this um, uh, uh, <coughs> cylinder this is already the correct setting. Yeah, So one point it should look at is 0, 0, 0 and the other one is 0, 100, 0 which means 100 down in this direction. Yeah? And you could also go 200 here in this direction or whatever. The particular number here makes no difference. But these two line points, say one is here, one is roughly here, say, okay, this is the line at which I want to look at. You just need to specify two arbitrary points on this line. So if we select now all layers except for our center here and apply this look at, you can see now they are nicely arranged here in the form of different cylinders that look at the right point. Okay, now let's get back to, back to our cylinder. So I select here the position where the cylinder is applied and go to load to have here in the interface again this cylinder eye expression. And then I select all of these here and hit uh, apply. And now I hit auto apply that, or ah no, actually we do it differently because applying here always takes a bit of time and we want to do it as fast as possible. So what I now want to do is I want to animate certain properties over time. So first I want to mo modify the radius. Yeah, so I go here to this null or to any layer where I want to put some control on and click here on this link symbol. 
and now it asks me do you want to uh, create a new control on this slider uh, or, or a new slider control or whatever on this layer and I say yes and now I have here on this a new effect that says radius of this 3D cylinder and this is actually a 2D value that controls the radius of this cylinder in x and y direction um, let's also create or uh, maybe let's first apply this to, to see show you really what's going on so we select uh, these and hit apply maybe also make this here a bit more compact by clicking here p okay what now is is the cylinder change it has now a radius of 50 in both dimensions uh, if we say here for example 200 it automatically updates now and gets wider but only in this direction and not in that direction yeah? in that direction you can specify it here so you can make cylinders that have more like an elliptic shape and not a round shape yeah? so now you can see it is in both dimensions um, like this or if we look from it on top yeah? here you have the top view you can see it's perfectly round if you go here back to let's say 100 only you can see the radius is 100 in this direction and 200 in this direction which now looks a bit strange here but if you have more layers they are placed placed m more nicely like this yeah but anyway so if you want elliptic shapes vary the radius here in in the both uh, dimensions of course now if you for example want let's go back here to the active camera only so one view if you want for example to to rotate your or move your cylinder you can just rotate or move the parent so I go here to rotation and have here a nice control to to rotate and ah okay my parent is not yet 3d so I make the center here 3d layer and now you can for example use the Y rotation to rotate your cylinder like this yeah um, also you can move of course by sh just animating the position of this parent so let's say we want to move it down or rather upwards so we can just say here for example zero and then it has moved up here over time okay so another thing that you have here that is um, the um, layer row offset this is quite nice and this means you can um, specify that certain rows should disappear at the top and reappear at the bottom so if you animate the camera along the cylinder you can make people believe that the cylinder consists of actually much more layers than you have yeah I mean of course if you want to scroll down here along a very huge cylinder you could just add something like 10,000 layers to your composition but the problem is this would get very slow so we have a cleverer approach and this is we have here this row offset and if you set this row offset here to one for example and apply it again so I need to select here all these layers and hit apply you will see the first a bunch of layers is disappearing here and they are reappearing at the bottom yeah and if you have here a row of set of two this will happen for the next also what is this here the number of rows says tells how many layers you have in total yeah you must count how many of these rows here are visible if you say this here is for example four um, apply set this to four this row which was original here remember as the first row is placed not below the third one but below the fourth row because the expression thinks there are four rows in total so it thinks everything until here is still finished yeah so therefore it leaves some space in between so either set here the correct number of rows that you actually have yeah or um, set a larger number if you really intend to have some space here in between but the usual thing is to say okay I have here one two three elements on top of each other so I set this to three and then my row offset is uh, working nicely so again I apply this like this 
Okay, so you can link this uh, row number of rows thing here now to a slider. Yeah, select here the center and click here and then it asks, yes, I want to create a new such control. And now I have here this effect created number of rows. Uh, oh, sorry, I actually didn't want to link the number of rows, but I wanted to cr uh, link here this row offset. Yeah, So yeah, we can actually unlink this here again and we can actually use this one here. We just uh, call it row offset and now link with this property selected. I click here. Yeah, When I have this selected and click here, it links to this property. If I would just select the layer and click here, it would ask me whether it should create a new control. So this time, time we want to use this control here and link it. And now also let's get rid of these position keyframes here for a moment and just move everything up. Yeah. And now let's see what happens if we animate this row slider here over time. So we have it zero at first and then let's say nine frames later it should for example be at nine. Yeah. This means here at this time point, ah, okay, we haven't applied this I expression yet, therefore do nothing happens. So whenever you change here something and have not auto apply enabled, make sure to select all your layers and hit apply. Now you can see all these elements are here at the bottom because uh, we have at this point already such an offset of nine rows. Yeah, so the first nine rows traveled bottomwards. And if we take a look at the RAM preview, we can see that it step by step from having an offset of zero to having an offset of nine makes these rows here travel from the top to the bottom. Yeah? And if you now think of animating a camera following this thing, the camera has the impression that you have an infinite um, cylinder, although in fact you are just uh, reusing the same layers again and again. Yeah, make just sure that the layer, the camera just looks at this part where all layers are visible. And this is quite nice because you need much less layers than you would need uh, if, if you would have for each thing here a separate layer. Yeah? So if you reuse layers, everything gets much faster because you need less layers and therefore everything renders much faster. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is uh, the wiggle. So this keyframe offset is the same as in all the other distribute eye expressions. Also, once you enable it, you can use the keyframes of your layers to still move away from their position in the um, cylinder. But you can look, for example, at the distribute 2D grid, or I think also in the 3D grid, I'm, oh no, I, I'm not sure. Anyway, at least in the 2D grid, I'm sure I uh, explained you how to do this, and it works for all these distribute eye expressions in the same way. Now the wiggle is the last thing I want to use. The wiggle is nice first to let uh, layers animate in and out of their position in the um, cylinder and then also to make them just wiggle or make them play be placed a bit less regular. So for this wiggling you have different alternatives how exactly to wiggle, namely in all directions, on only the surface of the cylinder but on this surface basically in all directions, so left, right and up and down, or only left and right on this surface. Yeah. Um, so let's see first how in all directions is looking like, and I've set this here already to some reasonable values. Or make uh, Let's make this smaller one wiggle per second and an amplitude of 200. And I apply it to all of them. Apply. And now you can see they are not exactly on the cylinder anymore, but they are moving away from their position in the cylinder by a value of 200. Yeah, now you can link this amplitude also to a slider and animate this in from um, something. Uh, m maybe let's just, just show it to you. So we go here again to this null and say this amplitude should not be fixed, but we click here and say, yes, we want to have a new control for it. And then we go to the newly effect uh, created effect here, amplitude of this cylinder thing. And we see, say at the beginning, we want to have it a value of 200. And say 10 frames later, 
we want it to be zero. Oops, not 2000, but zero. Oops, and of course I want to keyframe this. So I go here to the beginning and go here to 200, or maybe we can even make it much stronger, say 500. Now you do not see any changes yet because I haven't applied this modified uh, I expression yet. So I select all the layers and hit apply. And now you can see at the beginning it has a value of 500. So it is very um, distributed here everything. And now over 10 frames the wiggling gets less. So all the elements come closer to their position where they belong to in this sphere. So a very nice way to make elements animate into their position at the, oh sorry, not sphere, but uh, cylinder, of course. Uh, so like this, you have a very nice animation in of the elements of their position, uh, to their position on the cylinder by just animating the amplitude here. Let's maybe clean this up here a bit. So, um, okay, the next thing I also want to show you is um, if I fair not in all directions, but only on the surface, yeah, and reapply this, then the elements are wiggling only on the surface of the cylinder, meaning they are not moving away from the cylinder, but only from their position on the cylinder. Uh, this is nice to keep things a little bit less regular. So if you want to keep elements on the cylinder, but they should not be placed in a very regular fashion, you can use um, this idea here. Uh, you can see now they stay here on the cylinder, but they are not placed uh, in a regular way there. And now they come into the place where they should be. Or in other words, if you have, if you want them, them to be placed like this, but just a little bit off all of them, and then you can just say, okay, I set here an amplitude of, let's say, 10 or so, and then all of them are just a little bit less regular placed, yeah, or 40 makes it even stronger. Uh, like this, you have still the impression of a cylinder, but all of the elements are... Um, on on uh, not exactly on their place and currently since I have here a frequency of one if I make a ramp preview from this point on you can see that the elements are moving on this cylinder yeah, it's like they are floating or so they are not perfectly fixed in their position which might be a quite nice effect if you want them to be off but do not want them to move you can set the frequency to zero but still keep the amplitude uh, at uh, some higher value uh, here you can see now they are all floating a bit and you can control this very easily by controlling the amplitude that I've now linked to this slider here. Okay, the last option that you have here for the wiggling is to wiggle on the surface only left, right. So we have to reapply such that you can see the changes. So I select all these layers here and hit apply. And if we now go here to the beginning, we are remember we had a very big amplitude in our wiggle. You can see that the elements are off, but they all stay in their row, so to speak. Yeah? Only on the single rows, they wildly move in different directions due to the wiggle, until they now come into their place where they should be. Yeah, so this one is really just they stay in their row, but wiggle only left to right on this surface. So along with the wiggle alone, you already have a lot of different options how to animate elements either on the, sphere su uh, on the cylinder surface or away from it. If this is not yet enough animation control for you, you can still use these keyframe offsets that I describe for other uh, distribute eye expressions in more detail.